Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Sunday, August 25th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Sunday, Major League Baseball. First up, the Roku game between the Nationals and the Braves, 12.05 Eastern. We got DJ Hertz and Reynaldo Lopez as the projected starters. And, you know, DJ Hertz hasn't been the best on the road this season, but his last couple of road games were pretty successful. He had a quality start against the Orioles back on August 14th. And then at St. Louis, he went five innings, a two-run, eight-strikeout ball against the Cardinals. And I think this time around, he's actually going to get some run support as I still don't necessarily trust Reynaldo Lopez in this particular spot. He's definitely pitched really well overall this season, but this is only his second start back from the injury. He wasn't great in his rehab start. Now, his first start back against the Phillies was a good outing, but he also had a few spots in that, in that game where, especially early on, you know, bases loaded jam. He was able to get out of those jams. And he was able to miss some bats, but the Phillies have been pretty miserable against Ryan and pitching in the last month. I think this is actually going to be a tougher matchup, and I'm going to take the, the Washington Nationals plus the one and a half runs on the money line in this game. Next up, we see the Rockies and the Yankees. Austin Gomber and Marcus Stroman are your starters. Not my favorite game on the board, but when you look at Stroman, he's starting to bounce back. His last two games, 11 innings of one-run ball combined. No home runs given up in those two starts. And I know Gomber's coming off a good outing at Washington, but I think there's a much tougher matchup here against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium, coming off a blowout loss. We know it was not the Yankees' day on Saturday. I think we see him bounce back with a much better performance here offensively and pitching-wise. So give me the Yankees on the run line at home. Next up, the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Boston Red Sox. Merrill Kelly and Tanner Houck are your projected starters. I like the over in this game. At Fenway Park, a very hitter-friendly ballpark, we got Merrill Kelly. Didn't pitch well in that second start back against the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field. Giving up six earned runs, eight base hits, a couple of walks, and a home run in an eventual 8-7 to seven loss, so high-scoring game. Tanner Houck pitched well you know, his last time against the Astros, but the Red Sox have lost his last five games. He's also given up a good amount of base runners, eight base hits given up in that last one against the Astros. I think the Diamondbacks, one of the best lineups in baseball against righties right now, will be able to get to Houck. Don't necessarily trust either of these bullpens, so give me the over in Arizona-Boston. Next up, the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. we got Carson Spires and Luis Ortiz as the projected starters. You know, Spires got crushed in that last game, giving up five home runs, nine earned runs in only four and a third innings and a 10-3 Blue Jays win. And he's not been great on the road so far this season with an ERA above eight. But on the other side, Luis Ortiz, he was pitching really well out of the bullpen, but just hasn't been as effective as a starting pitcher. The Pirates have lost his last five starts, and he's given up at least one home run in all those games and two plus home runs in three of the three of the five. So I, th I just think that the Reds, you know, pretty solid lineup against righties, good power numbers, should be able to get to Ortiz. I think we see a high-scoring game in this one. I'm going to go with another over in Cincinnati-Pittsburgh. Next up, we see the Angels and the Blue Jays. We've got Tyler Anderson and Kevin Gosman on the mound. The Blue Jays have played well in this series, and I like their matchup here. I mean, Kevin Gosman, even though the Blue Jays lost his last game against Cincinnati, he has been a very profitable option recently, and that includes a win over these Angels back, back on August 13th, where he went seven innings, a scoreless ball, and a 6-1 to Blue Jays win. And on the flip side, the next day, August 14th, Anderson faced the Blue Jays, and he got crushed in that one. Seven earned runs, two home runs, four walks, and a 9-2 to Blue Jays win. Toronto is just dominating the Angels right now, and Anderson's not in good form. I got to roll the Blue Jays in this one on the run line, land the one and a half runs, and potentially two and a half runs as well. Next up, the Chicago Cubs taking on the Miami Marlins. We have Javier Assad and Adam Aller as the starters. Assad may not have the best expected numbers, but it's kind of been the common theme in his career where he's at pretty low ERAs, but the you know XFIP, the expected ERA in the fours, so far regression has not been an issue for him. And with how well he's pitched and the fact that you know Aller's not been great on the other side, I got to roll with the Cubs in this one. I mean, Chicago's offense really showed up yesterday, and I think they'll be able to get to Aller, who in his only start of the year so far, five earned runs, Two bombs against the Diamondbacks, a 9-6 loss. I'm going to go with the Cubs in this one on the money line and run line. In our next game, we see the Texas Rangers taking on the Cleveland Guardians. We have a pair of lefties on the mound in this one, Cody Bradford and Matthew Boyd. Now, in the last 30 days, the Rangers have the better team OPS against lefties. The Guardians have the much better power numbers, but I just think Cody Bradford is the better starting pitching option in this one. I was a little bit worried with his game after I saw his start against the Minnesota Twins, but 
he pitched really well the next game as well. And I, I think he's honestly a solid option for, for the Rangers going forward. He's been a profitable option as well. He's got a nice winning record so far. And Matthew Boyd, while he pitched well in his season debut, didn't really like what I saw from him in that last game. Gave up the sharp contact. I think the Rangers can get to him, even though it's not been a you know very trustworthy or consistent offense from, from Texas this year. I think they'll be able to get on the board early. And I think that their bullpen's also improving, even though I still think it's you know one of the weaker bullpens in the American League. They've got some good options in the late innings. I'm going to go with the Rangers in this one. You can take them in the first five, but you don't want to sweat out that bullpen. But I think they win the full game as well. Next up, the Detroit Tigers taking on the Chicago White Sox. No official starter for Detroit, but we should see Jonathan Cannon going for Chicago. I'm going to lean towards the White Sox in this game. I know it's not easy back in Chicago, but I mean, for me, when I looked at this series and the potential starting pitching matchups, this was the game I thought Chicago had their best chance at winning because you got Cannon on the mound. He's pitched well at home. He's been one of their better starting pitchers in general this year. No official starter for Detroit, so they're going to probably rely on that bullpen quite a bit. It's not been a great bullpen, so you know I think the White Sox could find a win here. Not my favorite game on the board, especially without that information from Detroit, but I'll lean towards the White Sox. Next are the Philadelphia Phillies and the Kansas City Royals at Kauffman Stadium. No official starter for Philadelphia. Seth Lugo should be going for KC. Now, Lugo had a couple of really bad starts, and you know he bounced back in a big way that last game against the Angels. Before that, against the Red Sox and the Twins, he gave up 11 earned runs combined and two losses. But against L.A., a weak lineup, he went seven innings, a two-run ball with eight strikeouts and a 5-3 to three Royals win and run line cover. Now, you would think the Phillies are a tough matchup, and you know they still are on paper, but in the last month, they've been one of the worst lineups in baseball against right-handed pitching. So right now, I am looking to fade Philadelphia when they're facing a tough right-handed starter. I think Lugo could go another five, six strong innings. He's a really efficient starting pitcher, so honestly, he could find himself in the seventh inning in this one. And I think the Royals bats back him up. They've been a very good offense at Kauffman this year. Given the Royals, you know, this is a huge game. I mean, both teams are obviously fighting for their playoff spots. But, I mean, the Royals are right in the mix now in the AL Central. I got to go with the Royals in this game. Next up, we see the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Minnesota Twins. Eric Fetty and Zebby Matthews are your starters. Now, I don't think Zebby Matthews had his best stuff in that last game against San Diego. But, you know, he was still able to go five innings of two-run balls. So if you don't have your best stuff and you can still put together a decent outing, that's exactly what you're looking for from a young MLB starter. And I think Matthews is still a good call-up here for the Twins. And, he, you know, he had two walks in that last game against San Diego. But in the minor leagues, one of the best, you know, walks per nine ratios in, in the minors. So I think he cleans that up. I think he's, he's going to be a lot sharper here at Target Field. And Eric Fetty's just not been great on the road this season. Hasn't necessarily been great with his new team so far as they're 1-3 in his first four starts. I'm going to roll the Twins in this game on the money line. Next up, the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Oakland Athletics. Frankie Montas and Joey Estes are your starters. And the Brewers have pretty much dominated this series thus far. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't blame you for taking the Brewers in this game as well. But, I mean, Joey Estes has been so strong at home this season. He's got a ERA above 7 on the road, but a sub-3 ERA at 2.22 in 52 innings at home. So just, you know, night and day difference. Also, about 100 points lower on his opponent's batting average at home versus on the road. I think he can pitch well in this game. I still don't necessarily love Frankie Montas on the other side. I will give him credit. He's been a very profitable starter with Milwaukee so far, and he is improving his game. But I think the A's can get to him in a lower scoring game. I'm going to go with the Oakland Athletics and the under in this one. Next up, the New York Mets taking on the San Diego Padres. Jose Quintana and Martin Perez pair of lefties in this one. Now, we've mentioned the regression concerns with Jose Quintana, and we've really started to see that in his last five games or so. I mean, his last four games, he's given up three-plus runs. He gave up seven in that last one against the Orioles, and the Mets have lost his last four games now, and the control's been off. The strikeout number's been inconsistent. Now you face a Padres team that has a very low strikeout rate against lefties, good OPS numbers, solid isolated power numbers. I think Quintana struggles mightily in this game. And while Martin Perez, at the beginning of the season, in the middle of this season, wasn't my favorite option, He's been pretty solid with his new team. His last start wasn't his best, but San Diego's 4-0 with him on the mound so far. His strikeout numbers improved a little bit. He's been able to keep the ball on the ground for the most part, still giving up a home run, at least one home run in his last four games. But other than a couple of mistake pitches, he's been really sharp. I'm going to go with the Padres in this one on the money line at home. Next up, the San Francisco Giants and the Seattle Mariners. Robbie Ray and Brian Wu are your starters. You know, Brian Wu has been a very consistent option for Seattle this year in that rotation, kind of an underrated starting pitcher. But the problem is that Mariners offense is not consistent enough. I know the Giants haven't been amazing offensively themselves, but Robbie Ray, a left-handed pitcher facing a Mariners team that in the last month, only one team has a worse team OPS than Seattle. That's the White Sox. 
and Seattle's strikeout rate through the roof against lefties. Robbie Ray, that's his bread and butter. He looks to strike out a lot of guys so far, 39 Ks and 27 and two thirds, had nine of them in six and two thirds in that last game against the White Sox. And we just talked about the Mariners, you know, right there with the White Sox in the last month against lefties. Ray went six and two thirds of one run ball in a four to one Giants win in that game against Chicago. I think we could see similar numbers here. I think the Giants do enough against Wu to find a win. I'm going to lean towards the under, but give me the Giants in this one on the money line. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Shane Boz and Gavin Stone are your starters. Now, I would look at a few home run props in this game for L.A. You know, one of the reasons why Shane Boz's expected ERA was pretty steep through his first few starts was because he was giving up a lot of sharp contact. And it, while he's only given up four home runs so far this year, I could see the Dodgers finding a couple of them. Uh, you know, Shohei Otani is, of course, one of the more popular ones each day. But even a guy like Teoscar Hernandez, the home run derby winner, or, you know, maybe Mookie Betts. I, I think they're worth a look here for L.A. And I think they find a few home runs and win this game. Gavin Stone's much better form now. His last couple of starts really sharp. I think the Dodgers win this one and cover the run line. And like I said, maybe sprinkle a little bit on those home run props. And the final game we're to talk about for the Sunday card in Major League Baseball, the Astros and the Orioles. We got Yusei Kikuchi and Dean Kramer as your starters. Now, this is a game where it's tough to go against the Astros because Yusei Kikuchi's been so strong with his new team. I mean, 4-0, the Astros are in his first four games. Two of those were at home. Two of those were on the road. He's given up two earned runs or fewer in all four of those starts. The strikeout numbers have been there. He hasn't been able to go too deep into ball games, right around five and a third to five and two-thirds innings, but his control's been better. The strikeout numbers we talked about, his offense is backing him up, and I think against Dean Kramer, who's just not been great at Camden Yards this year, I think the Astros get to him for a few early and never look back. I'm going to go with the Houston Astros in this one on the money line, maybe even lay at one and a half runs as well. And that's it. Those are the games for Sunday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Put those baseball picks in the comment section below. And again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.